Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about the assumptions associated with linear regression. As we know, linear regression is one of the simplest statistics based machine learning algorithm for regression problems. In this video, we are going to understand the primary assumptions associated with it. What, how do we determine if those assumptions are met and what steps should we undertake if those assumptions fail? I am Saurav Agarwal, you are watching Data Hat Unfolding Mystery. Let us continue. So in this video, we are going to talk about the assumptions of linear regression. As you can see from the image, this image depicts some of the primary assumptions associated with linear regression. Understand. Whenever we talk of assumptions, that means introducing bias into our model. And as we know that linear regression is a primary example of having a high bias, right? Now coming forward to the agenda of this video. So we will look at the introduction to linear regression. We will talk about the primary assumptions. And as a subsection, we will determine how we will understand how to determine those assumptions, what to do if those assumptions fail and above all, we shall discuss the summary heteroscedasticity, right? But before moving ahead, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, share with your friends and data science enthusiasts. And let us continue. So what are the primary assumptions? We shall discuss the five primary assumptions associated with linear regression. The first one is the linearity. There exists a linear relationship between variables. When we talk between variables, these denote the independent variables as well as the dependent variables. The independent variables are the predictor variables and the dependent variables is the target variable. Understand that the target variable here is a continuous valued variable. Constant variance. So we also want to understand here, constant variance also denotes a constant variance means homocedasticity. Whenever the residuals have constant variance at every level of our data points, then we call it a homocedastic data set and the linear regression assumption is met. The third is independence of errors. The errors or the residuals should be independent of each other. There should be no observed pattern among the residuals and the data points. Lack of multicollinearity. So we talk of independent variables. Now with independent variables, we do not want any of the independent variables to be correlated with one another. We shall look into detail how do we determine multicollinearity. And the last of all is the normality of residual. The residuals or the errors associated with the linear regression model should be normally distributed. Right? These are the five primary assumptions based on which a linear regression model gives us sufficient and good enough results in order for us to have a reliable set of outputs right if any of these assumptions fail on certain aspect then the reliability of our linear regression model goes down and we cannot confidently say that the p-value associated with the predictions are good enough or fair enough okay Next, we shall look into the details of each of these assumptions one by one. The first is linearity, existence of linear relationship between independent and dependent variable. So this is true because we know that linear, linear, relation, linear regression, what is linear regression? So let us, okay, before coming to these assumptions, where we shall also look at what do we understand by linear regression? I hope, I, I believe that most of you know about linear regression at this point, but just to make things simpler and keep the flow of the video constant, we shall disguise them. So we know whenever we need to predict continuous values such as price, regression modeling comes into the picture. So you understand two types of variables exist, continuous values and discrete values, right? Discrete values are set of defined set of values, for example, class labels, orange, apple, banana, whereas continuous values such as price of a particular house, say for example, or the age of a person, which is continuous. A regression model provides a function that describes the relationship between one or more independent variables and a dependent variable or target variable. Okay, so a regression model that we are considering here provides us a function that describes a relationship. The regression model that we are considering here provides us a function that describes the relationship 
between one or more independent variables and a dependent variable or the target variable okay so when we talked of statistical tests remember we talked of linear regression as one of our statistical tests why because it helps us determine the relationship between two or more variables right now you can connect the dots and if you haven't watched the video of in statistical tests and especially based on ANOVA then go ahead I'll attach the link in the i button above okay now continuing back when the underlying relationship is assumed to be linear we use linear regression so we know that Whenever we have continuous values to predict, we use a regression based modeling and when the relationship between the independent variables and the predicted variable is linear, we use linear regression. Now you also understand why our first assumption was very necessary because if the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable is non-linear, then we cannot use linear regression. Okay. Now going back to our assumptions. Okay. So you understand now why we need the linearity assumption. How do we determine this linearity? How do we determine if the relationship between the independent and dependent variables is linear? So one of the primary things that you can think of is intuitively draw a plot, draw a scatter plot between the independent variables and the dependent variables. If you see that the points fall fairly enough on a straight line or on a diagonal, then you can conclude that your linearity assumption is made. Okay. Now, what do we do if that condition is violated? We apply a non-linear transformation to the independent variable or the dependent variable. What are these non-linear transformations such as taking the log or taking the square root, right? So these are some of the non-linear transformations. All additionally, what we can do, we can add an other independent variable to the model. For example, if the plot of X versus Y is parabolic, then it would make sense to include X square as one of our independent variables. Okay, some of the feature engineering that we can do. Okay. Now coming to our next assumption of constant variance. Constant variance is also known as homosedasticity. Homosedasticity. The other term related is heterosedasticity when the variance is non-constant. Okay. When the variance has certain relationship with the data points. Now when heterosedasticity is present or when homosedasticity is missing or assumption is has failed for linear regression then the results of the analysis become hard to trust as we talked about the reliability of the overall model goes down specifically heterosedasticity increases the variance of the regression coefficient estimates now we know that the linear regression model estimates certain parameters which are the coefficients of a linear equation now we cannot trust or we can or what will happen is the variance with respect to those coefficients would increase if our heterosedasticity is high and therefore our conclusion with respect to the model or the results would be unreliable one of the things examples that you can conclude is say for example if the variance associated with the salary of a person at a particular point say the salary of the individual is fifty thousand dollars now the variance associated is ten thousand dollars now it would be logical to have a conclusion of forty thousand dollars to sixty thousand dollars as the range of salary for that individual however now if you find that this variance is holds a relationship with the data point say at a particular point say the salary of an individual is ten thousand dollars and at that point your variance also varies with respect to that individual salary and it is $2,000. So his salary would be in the range of $8,000 to $12,000. You would say that logically this is making more sense. But what is happening here is your model is not able to capture that difference. Your model is not able to capture the difference in scale between the salaries of the two individuals. Hence the results associated with that model is less reliable. Okay, I hope this is making sense now. Okay. Now again, how do we determine if this assumption is made? The same thing, we will again plot a scatter plot, but this time we'll plot a scatter plot with the fitted value or our regression output and the residuals. If the residual doesn't depend on the values of the predictor variable, then the assumption is made and they are homosedastic. What to do if the condition is violated? Again, we do, we apply a non-linear transformation, example log. Okay, here we transform the dependent variable or we could use a weighted regression assigns a weight to each point based on the variance of its fitted value giving smaller weights to data points with larger variances okay so this is another technique that you can apply 
I'll attach a reference to one of the articles where you can see how these assumptions and techniques are applied, okay, practically applied in Python. I haven't created a separate notebook for that because I found that that particular article was good enough for your understanding for the implementation. If you face any difficulties, let me know in the comments and I'll create a separate notebook for that and also a video as per your requirements, okay. Now, as you can look from the diagram here, what does a home, what does homoscedastic data set look like and what does heteroscedastic data set look like? So if you see, these are your data points and the data point, the variances in your data points are nearly constant across, right? They are not varying or they are not dependent on your predictor variables. So this is a homoscedastic data set. The line fitted on this particular data set would make much more sense, okay? The other example we see that here your variance is varying or dependent on your predictor variable. Therefore, the linear regression model based on this particular plot or this particular data set would be unreliable. Okay. Now coming to a third assumption of independence of errors or residuals. Now residuals should be independent. Why? If your residual is dependent on your data point, again, your linear regression model wasn't able to capture the differences or wasn't able to capture the underlying relationship between the variables. Think logically, right? If your residual is, is able to vary with respect to the depending, de <laughs> with respect to your dependent variables, then why not your model is able to capture it? There must be something wrong with their model and we cannot rely on that such model. Okay, so we don't want there to be a pattern among consecutive residuals. How to determine if the assumption is made? We plot residuals versus time. Now here this time we are plotting residual versus time. Ideally, most of the residual autocorrelations fall, should fall within the 95% confidence bands around zero. Now, what is autocorrelation? Autocorrelation or serial correlation is the correlation of signal with delayed copy of itself as a function of delay. Now, you have a signal which is varying with time. Now, if your signal is again dependent on itself but with a delayed time interval, then that is an autocorrelation. And what we want is that most of this autocorrelation should fall within the 95% confidence interval. When we will talk about time series based data and time series based modeling, then we shall discuss in detail what autocorrelation means and how should we interpret it. But just understand here for the sake of our assumptions that autocorrelation is a correlation between the signal and its delayed copy. Now what to do if the condition is violated? For positive serial correlation, consider adding lags of dependent and or independent variable. We will introduce lags into our data set. For negative serial correlation, make sure none of the variables are over different. Over differenced. Over differenced means subtracting the variable by itself in order to eliminate any trend, seasonality and other patterns. Again, this is related to a time series based modeling concept and you do not need to go into the details as for now. Just understand it from the sake of assumptions. Okay. For seasonal correlation, consider adding seasonal dummy variables. Okay. Now let us quickly go to the next assumption of lack of multicollinearity. Multicollinearity occurs when independent variables in a recreation model are correlated or they are dependent on one another. Okay. Say for example, you have date of birth of an individual as well as the age of that individual. So these two variables are highly correlated and the results that you get and the coefficient that you get with respect to this model would be unreliable because it would not be able to capture the true coefficient associated with this dependent variable. Rather, it would be distributed between the two and probably lead to more weightage or less weightage depending on the situation. Independent variables must be independent of each other. So this is implied again. How to determine if the assumption is made? Variance inflation factor identifies correlation between independent variables and the strength of that correlation. Okay, variance inflation factor is a technique that will identify such a correlation. Now, variance inflation factor ranges between 1 to positive infinity. Now, if the value is 1, it means that your variables or the independent variables are non-correlated and your assumption holds true. However, if the value lies more than 5, VIF is greater than 5, then you have severe multicollinearity in your data set and you need to check that as 
check that accordingly okay now what to do if the condition is violated again here we apply a non-linear transformation to the independent or dependent variable okay our final assumption is of normality of residuals now residuals are normally distributed what do we mean by it if you take the sample of residuals at a point they should form a normal distribution and how do we determine it we determine it using a qq plot qq plot is quantile quantile plot if the points on this plot form roughly a form a diagonal then the normality assumption is met however if the condition is violated then there must be outliers present you need to make sure that these outliers do not have a greater impact on your linear regression model as well as you need to determine if these outliers are based on what do we do if these assumptions are violated so if these assumptions is violated which means we have outliers in your data set so first of all we need to check the impact of these outliers on the overall performance of the linear regression model additionally we should consider that these outliers are not due to human errors rather they are actual data points okay for this you need to go back to the source of the data set this is the second technique as you see in most of the linear regression assumptions the assumption is met simply by doing a linear transformation okay or not sorry doing a non-linear transformation on your dependent or independent variables so again here taking the non-linear transformation will help you example taking the log or the square root now this is an example of a qq plot you take the residuals you plot a qq plot again you'll find the implementation in the article link that i'll attach okay just look at it try to understand you can also google it down it's a very good technique first of all if you just go ahead and google search techniques then you'll learn lot many things you'll be able to understand how to uh, look for different techniques look for different methods look for different ideas okay also you'll learn additional techniques which perhaps i did not cover here right there could be as many number of techniques as the development is going on but here we are considering the core of it what are the most important assumptions and what are the important techniques associated with it okay let me know in the comments if you find additional techniques for how do we resolve these tech these assumptions or how do we determine these assumptions okay i'll wait for your answers in the comments below now with this we come to the end of our video but just a small joke it's not taken personally it was gen this this particular joke was created by tiffany arthur okay uh, i think he's a cartoonist as per him he tried to make a joke on like uh, an extrapolation a linear regression technique wherein uh, based on like today you have one husband then as the number of days progresses you'll have many number of husbands so when you go and order for cake for a wedding make sure you make a bulk order into the future okay so just just tingling around a bit don't take it personally now to summarize the things linear regression is one of the simplest machine learning as algorithms however with simplicity comes assumptions and with assumptions bias is introduced as we talked about if any of the assumptions do not hold true the confidence associated with the results reduce however still linear regression provides a good benchmark for regression problems and time series forecasting so most of your time series based modeling uses some of the concepts of from statistics and linear regression is one of the techniques for time series forecasting and is a very good technique okay so with this we come to the end of the lecture. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, share with your friends and data science enthusiasts. See you in the next picture video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.